Hello everyone, this is John Little back with the second part of the eighth episode of WeeklyPokerHand.com where I am now going to be taking a look at a hand from my opponent's perspective, which is certainly something you always need to do whenever you are playing poker. You need to think about what they are seeing and you need to use that to try to figure out their range and also try to figure out what your perceived range is to them. So let's go and get right to the hand. Here J Card Shark, that's me, um, opens to 150 from the button. And Jay Canby elects to flat call a king eight suited from the big blind. And right here, I think that re-raising is probably going to be a little bit more profitable than flat calling, unless he thinks I'm going to do a lot of four betting, which, honestly, I'm probably not. But um, if Jay Canby does three bet here to something like 525, that's going to put Jay Cardshark in a pretty tough spot. And he's probably going to call a lot of flops, but then fold to a flop and or turn bet. So I would not hate a 3-bet here at all. I think it would be a pretty strong play, and it's probably what I would do with King-8 suited here. He liked it to call, though. If you are going to call with hands like King-8 suited, um, sort of like I talked about in last video, you really don't need to be looking to just check fold the flop, which is what a lot of weaker players do. They'll call pre-flop with King-8 suited, then they'll like check call on this board, 9-6-5, so you already have a gut shot and an overcard. They'll like check call there, and then they'll check fold the turn when they miss. And I think that's probably the worst way to play the hand. So the way you need to play this hand is by being aggressive. Either by donk betting out, which is certainly an option, or by um, check raising. And I think check raising is probably a little bit better here. If the, like a, one of these cards was a club giving you a backdoor flush draw, I'd really like a check raise. Um, but I, I wouldn't really hate a bet here of like 225. I think that would be pretty powerful as well. Anyways, he does like to go for the check raise, which I think is... Either play, I think, in this spot is better than the check fold. I think this is going to get Jay Cardshark off of all of his overcards, which is certainly in his range. And if he does have something like 7-6 or 7-5 or a 6 he's probably going to call once and then fold to a turn bet. So when Jay Cardshark calls this bet, you have to put him on a range sort of like a pair or better, and that he will probably fold to on a good turn. This, however, is a bad turn. So, what Jay Camby should probably do here is throw out another bet and then also bet the river if the river is a card higher than a 9 or if it's a 7 or 6. So, I guess a 6, 7, jack, 10, 10 jack, king, queen, or ace. I, those are probably going to be good barrel cards. And I, I know this probably looks a little bit dicey because I'm, I'm effectively saying this guy should be willing to run a big bluff here. And... I don't really think it's too out of line, because if you have an aggressive guy on the button, J Card Shark, raising probably a decent amount of buttons, you want to do everything you can to slow him down. And if it requires you to throw out a decent sized bluff that you may even lose a touch of equity in, it's probably not that big of a deal, because it may slow down J Card Shark in the future, and that's ideal. So, I definitely don't mind a bet here, but if I bet here, I am going to be very willing to, fi to fire a lot of turn a lot of rivers. So we have an 898 bet here. I think this is a fine size. I'd probably make it a little bit larger. You really want to make Jay Cardshark think that he's going to have to put a lot of money in this pot to call down. And No one wants to be sitting here with something like A6 and be looking at a 900 chip bet here or a 1000 chip bet here and then a 2000 chip bet on the river. So anyways, Jay Cardshark calls. When Jay Cardshark calls, I think he, he's going to have something like 98, maybe... 10-9, ace-9. I guess I could have any 9, really. Um, not 9-5. He could have 9-6, though. I think that J. Cardshark could probably have ace-6 here as well. Probably not looking to fold that quite yet. Certainly could have over pairs. So really, the question is, when this 10 comes, will J. Cardshark fold something like a 9? Will, will he fold ace-9? And I think the answer is probably no, but I think he'll certainly fold something like ace-6. So now if you bet, you have to re whenever you're making a bet on the river, you always need to try to figure out what you're trying to get your opponent off of. And if the answer is a hand that they're not going to fold to any bet, betting's probably pretty awful. Right here, I do think Jay Cardshark will fold out stuff like ace-6, 6-7, seven, 7-5, seven, 6 eight, stuff like that. So I, I would probably throw out a bet here of like 1,500. I think that's going to get the job done. Obviously, if Jay Cardshark has a 9 or a 10, he's never folding. If he has an overpair, he's never folding. He may even fold something like pocket eights to a 
1500 chip bet. So I think that's probably going to be the ideal play in this situation. So I would love a bet here of maybe 15... Actually, I would probably go like 1650, something like that. Just enough to make it hurt when you're wrong. Um, anyways, Jay Camby checks, though. Jay Carshark checks and rolls over his ace-9 and wins a nice pot. And I don't really think Jay Camby went wrong on this hand until the river. And this is one of those rare, rare spots where I do think throwing out a three-barrel, even against an aggressive semi-calling stationist type player, is probably not that bad of an idea. So this has been Jonathan Little for Weekly Poker Hand. Please let me know if you guys have any questions or comments. And thank you for watching.